On Cisco routers, we configure QoS using a tool called the MQC. This stands for Modular QoS CLI. This might sound fancy, but don't let the name intimidate you. All it is is a hierarchy of CLI commands, which we'll see soon. It works like this. We use one or more class maps to create classes and assign traffic to them. For example, we may have a class for real-time traffic. We create a class map to define the class and we place voice traffic in that class. We then create a policy using a policy map. The policy map applies an action to traffic in the class. For example, we could mark the traffic in the real-time class. We may also rate limit traffic from another class. And finally, we use a service policy to apply the policy map to an interface. We can apply this policy to traffic coming into or going out of an interface. The router looks at the traffic passing through the interface. It will check the service policy to see if it needs to perform an action on this traffic. So to summarize, when we configure QoS, we, one, create class maps to classify traffic. Two, create policy maps to apply actions to the classes. Three, assign a policy to an interface with a service policy. And four, we verify our settings. We'll see this in action in a moment. First, a little warning for you. Some of these commands might seem intimidating at first. The key to getting comfortable with this is to try it yourself. The more you try it, the more it will make sense to you. The lab at the end of this video will hopefully help you with this. We'll now run through some QoS configuration using a simple example. We're going to treat all traffic to or from the server as important. The first step in this is to classify the traffic. This means identifying traffic and putting it into a class. We can identify traffic using an access list, also known as an ACL. We've got a separate video on that if you're not familiar with them. Often we think of ACLs as a way to allow or deny traffic, but they're capable of much more. They are also used to identify interesting traffic. So we'll create a new extended access list called web server. We're going to permit traffic from the server, 10.0.0.1, to anywhere. And we're going to permit traffic from anywhere to the server as well. When we use ACLs with quality of service, the permit keyword means that this is the traffic we're looking for. It doesn't allow or block the traffic. Now that we have the ACL, we can create the class map. To do this, we use the class map command. Here, we have created a new class map called Important Traffic. We can choose whatever name we want. We've also used the match all statement. I'll come back to that in a moment. Notice that we're now in the class map configuration mode. This means we can add extra configuration within this class map. Here, we can add in our match criteria using the match command. We've told the class map to match the web server ACL that we created a moment ago. We can put several match criteria in here if we want to, to build more complicated class maps. For example, we might also look at markings as well as the access list. That's where the match all keyword comes in. This tells the class map that all the conditions we give it must match. If all the conditions match, that traffic is part of this class map. The alternative to match all is match any. This states that any one of these conditions we supply has to match. If any condition matches, that traffic will be part of this class map. We can have more than one class map, of course. In fact, there's already another class map here called class default. This is here to match all remaining traffic that we haven't already put in a class map. If we try to configure this class, you'll see this error message. This means that we can't configure it. Having this default class map here also means that all traffic will end up in some class map. The next step is to create a policy map to take some action. We'll call ours super policy. Policy maps also have sub configuration. Inside the policy, we'll use the class command to add actions to the class maps that we defined. You'll remember that we named our class map important traffic. We'll tell the router to give 50% of the link bandwidth to this class. This reserves up to 50% of the bandwidth for our server. The server can use more than 50% if it's available. This command 
just make sure it gets at least 50%. We can add the other 50% to the default class. We don't really need to do this as this covers all the remaining traffic anyway, but I just went ahead and did this just to show you there's there. There are several different actions that we can configure here. We'll look at a few more in the next video. The class maps and policies are for nothing if we don't apply them somewhere. Let's apply them to the gig 00 interface. We'll do this in the interface configuration area. We apply a policy with the service policy command. Remember to use a hyphen between service and policy or you'll make the same mistake that I just did. Notice that after the service policy command, I've put the out keyword. This means that the policy will apply to traffic that's leaving the interface. The alternative to this is the in keyword. This applies policy to traffic that's entering the interface. In this way, we can apply different policies to traffic entering or leaving the router. A common example of this is marking traffic as it comes in and rate limiting some traffic as it leaves. Some actions like reserving bandwidth will only work on traffic that is leaving the router. We can also add the bandwidth command. We saw this a few videos ago when we were talking about OSPF. Once again, this doesn't actually change the bandwidth of the link. It does give the router more information about the available bandwidth on the link. For example, this could be a 10 gig interface, but it's connected to a one gig WAN link. If we want to give 50% of our bandwidth to the server, it's important that the router knows how much bandwidth that actually is. That's now the end of the configuration. We can verify our settings with the show policy map interface command. This shows us the service policy, that's the policy map, on this interface. We can also see whether it's applied in the ingress or egress direction. Under that we have our class maps. At the bottom of each class is the action we've applied. Near the top, we can see the amount of traffic that has passed through this class map. So to summarize, we identify traffic with class maps. Policy maps apply actions to the traffic in the class maps, and policy maps are applied to an interface in a particular direction.